Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new night point of view review. In front of us is the new electric uh, Peugeot E208. This is the alert package. Um, so let's turn on the LEDs. These are the base LED lights. We're going to test them in pitch black. Uh, I'm just going to move around the car. And uh, this car has 50 kilowatt hour battery, 45 is usable. Range is 340 kilometers. Uh, more of a 275 combined if you're going faster on the uh, freeway um, so let's uh, check out the cargo space so um, it's 265 liters if you knock down the seats 1106 liters uh, decent for a small city hatch um, so let's jump inside uh, so this car uh, top charging speed is 100 kilowatt uh, hour 100 kilowatt hours and um, takes about um, on a fast charger around half an hour or maybe 45 minutes to charge depending on the speed of charging on 50 kilowatt hours should take it maybe 45 um, price of this model is 7,000 17,000 euros 600 uh, base model is 13,500 in uh, Croatia top ranging uh, would be 38 so uh, let's start her up now this car weight is ton and 300 if I'm not mistaken uh, kilos and um, so top speed is uh, 150 kilometers per hour I managed to get to 152 like and uh, 0 to 100 we're gonna test is should be 8.1 seconds um, not sure if I missed anything I think I didn't so this is the interior of the alert package um, there is a like uh, active alert GT line and GT package so this one doesn't have ambient lights unfortunately let's test the speakers um, the speakers, I would say, are pretty decent for a bass sound system. Now, uh, what is the most cool is the 3D cockpit. I hope you can see it from this angle. Uh, the GoPro uh, always, um, for some reason, uh, this uh, changes white illumination to blue uh, shade. And um, once we get to the highway, it's going to turn white how it is in person. Uh, I don't know I got the new GoPro 9 still the same problem um, anyway we're gonna test the base LED lights with the new iPhone 12 Pro as well which has night mode so let's stop talking and keep driving so um, probably heard uh, yesterday uh, and day after before that Croatia was hit by a, a terrible earthquake uh, I felt it myself it was 6.2 two or three by Richter scale um, I was like shaking for 30 seconds and it was very uh, unpleasant at least so would appreciate uh, all the support uh, to the Red Cross um, from all of you just a small donation to help those people who lost their homes um, my family and I are fine we live in a building that's you know capable of uh, uh, withstanding the earthquake but um, the epicenter was in one of the older cities that was completely uh, in ruins now uh, okay so uh, focus on the car um, let's start talking about so this uh, I did mention 136 horsepower so I had a uh, the crossover or SUV uh, 2008 this is very similar that one was a little bit softer uh, more comfortable on the road because it's a bit taller uh, this is a little bit lower uh, it's also a little bit lighter compared to that one but um, I would say the suspension is fairly like all French cars uh, more on the soft side more on the comfortable side uh, the wheels are 16 inch uh, it's standard on this model just depends on the package to the design style and we're on winter tires of course these are continental so I would say this is fairly um, comfortable and the car is very stable 
uh, even in the corners when you go a little faster it leans a bit but you don't the end back end doesn't stick out uh, this is a front wheel drive uh, most electric cars they're not all wheel drive have mo electric motor on the back this one's front wheel drive it has a good turning angle on the parking lot since it's a small car as well so uh, and the overview around you is good although if you want to check the blind spot uh, because there's not much space and you pull back the front seats uh, it's gonna give you a little bit maybe a problem there um, but uh, 136 horsepower on a small car is more than you really need perhaps um, if you put the car in the normal let's call it like that actually no not normal but if you put it into echo just trying to find the button so if you put it to echo I'm just gonna switch here to uh, flow you can see an echo here so this is like really not that responsive it's like really like a smaller engine it feels like a not engine smaller engine excuse me it feels like a less power version of the car and then if you press the normal and then it feels like I don't know 100 horsepowers and it's really you know it's decent for city drive but if you put it to sport so you should switch to sport if you touch it whoa it's very nippy it just pulls and it just flies this car becomes a little rocket on the road and i think this car is perfect for a city commute um and you know uh, smaller distances and now uh, this is electric car of course so it is um, you know instant torque um doesn't have uh you know engine noise so it's very silent very relaxing and if you drive gradually with the accelerator it's a very pleasant feeling uh, on lower speeds up to 50 60 kilometers per hour it's very silent you can hear maybe a little bit of tire noise the car has like a artificial buzzing sound uh, when you're on lower speeds to warn the pedestrians I'm just gonna lower the window a bit maybe you can hear it uh, probably not because of the noise I'm gonna do that in the garage when we end the video so if you're new to the channel and you like the content you see um, smash the like button and the subscribe button and in that case if you subscribe click the little bell to get notifications when I upload new videos there's gonna be also day point of view driving without me talking where you can hear all the sounds from this car and there's gonna be full review of the exterior interior and the infotainment and the 3d cockpit so um, uh, this car um, it's very good on the road so the steering is uh, very precise um, it does speeds up very easily it's as I mentioned very nippy very fast uh, if you need it in a sport um, but overall on the road this car is very comfortable even the soundproof inside the car is uh, I would say on the uh, average so it's a good soundproof uh, on the highways once once you reach speeds about 130 or actually above 100 the noise starts increasing if you drive 150 uh, if you're in Germany or Croatia the you know soundproof it's not gonna be the best because there's always a lot of wind noise but in those speeds where we mostly drive in Europe 130 or less it's a very good soundproof um, the inside of the car uh, the seats are very comfortable they don't have a lumbar support but they're really comfortable um, on this particular package alert I would criticize there is no light here there's nothing in here and even in the glove compartment it's huge but it has no illumination whatsoever inside it doesn't make any sense um, another con personally that just isn't like okay with me and I didn't see many cars have this Peugeot has this infotainment where it stays on one there is no like a home menu with the icons you can press this with the three fingers and then you get the shortcuts something I discovered in this car I didn't discover it in the last one by accident look at this how this crazy old people like to jaywalk across three lanes uh, it happens sometimes in Croatia um, so on an avenue terrible um, I apologize for uh, for uh, my fellow citizens who are not the brightest maybe um, 
but you know the rest of the fatemen isn't bad uh, i like the graphics uh, especially this three cockpit um, now if you see here you can see the car is slowing down it's recuperating and then if i press the accelerator it using the power on statistics you can see the power consumption currently you can also switch in the middle um, like let's say to this one personal two and then you can see the actually no not here then personal one and you can see if i come closer you can see uh, the current consumption and if I back up you can see the same thing over here uh, although it looks a little bit different now current information I think this is like your um, like actual power use I'm pressing the accelerator pedal and this is like your average uh, so this is good I believe like around 20 kilowatt uh, per hundred kilometers uh, when I'm on the highway, it jumps a little bit, uh, 25, close to 30, depending how fast you're going. This is just on the test, but if I'm going, you know, nicely inside the city, you can see that it's around 20-ish. So, uh, besides this menu that, you know, once you know, you can press three fingers, so you can switch to navigation. I think it's better in this car, I can reach these, and the other one, it was a little bit further away. So, you just press the navigation, how do I press phone? Now, navigation is good, has charging stations, um, and it also has like uh, a map with a circle where you can reach, also like a weather information, and it's, you know, fairly okay. Um, sometimes it's a bit laggy, but it works for the most part okay. Um, what I like is the three building, 3D buildings, um, and there is speed camera traps as a warning. Uh, it's also good, you can, uh, use the apps so you can connect Apple CarPlay Android Auto so you can use a Waze uh, probably everyone's favorite or you can use the Google Maps um, or some other maps you prefer um, the only also critic here when you press you you don't have uh, the uh, power consumption um, or the flow uh, you can have the flow inside of 3d cockpit so let me just check here like in energy you can see the same thing now as you can see here on the side if i come a little bit closer while we're in traffic like this you, over here you can see the level of your charge and it's almost now on one uh, one uh half how do you call this in english i would say this is like 50 percent uh, you actually you can see here the batteries there's like half of them full so this is around 50 percent uh charge but you can see percentage here neither over here or in the charging there's nothing you can't even adjust the uh like i want to charge to 80 uh, that's a little bit con that could be fixed via software update and um over here there's no battery percentage over here no battery percentage only when you plug the car you can see the battery percentage so uh, really doesn't make sense um, from perspective of an electric car but still with all these stuff that can be fixed via software update uh, I think the car is not bad uh, the price um, 17,600 euros for this particular model which has an extra option so it's probably a little bit more probably 18,000 euros for a small car is a bit pricey but European Union has um, suggested to its countries um, from 2021 to uh, exclude uh, value added tax for electric vehicles, all electric vehicles. So this car should be a lot cheaper and in general all electric cars should become more affordable. Um, and you know in the future when the development of batteries uh, this will become, uh, the electric cars are going to be more affordable so you know um i think the electric cars are the future but people you know uh, slowly adopt sometimes in new technologies so um just give it a little bit of time i think by 2025 um, things are gonna change um, uh, on the road there's gonna be more electric cars so far personally i love electric cars um the infrastructure is being built uh, I can see it here in Croatia, we're a small country, 
but we can see that there's a lot of investment in that area and uh, I've been in Germany so I've seen also uh, even more even better investment even faster um, infrastructure growth when it comes to charging stations and as the technology is developing uh, the charging will be faster um, you know and uh, easier and then again the electricity is uh, way cheaper and what's most important is the environment uh, with more electric cars on the road um, this is gonna be cleaner air in the cities and also less stress because cars uh, classic cars uh, create a lot of noise this is more comfortable uh, this doesn't make noise so people are not stressed out uh, the stress level is far lesser than in the cities if we replace most of the cars with electric cars and it's really relaxing to drive an electric car and that's what I love about it sometimes yes I miss the sound but I easily forget it and just get used to this at this point the camera should switch maybe the uh, background illumination of the buttons to white as mentioned so I'm gonna change here to dials <coughs> I'm gonna leave the consumption here so you can see it. So the base, base LED lights in person are okay. You can uh, control the height a little bit better. Uh, this is a long beam. Okay, so I'm gonna use the, yeah, actually not the cruise control. This is around 100 level of noise. The tarmac over here is a little bit uh, noisier gonna speed up do 130 so more noise more air noise if it's a lot of wind outside, it's gonna be even windier. I mean, noisier inside the car. Now I'm gonna to switch to sport. And I'm gonna floor it to 150. So you can hear the noise there's a lot of noise coming from the side mirrors from the front windshield but on 100 you can hear some tire noise and it's pretty okay also again it depends on the outside uh, you know wind and stuff like that um, what's also cool you can turn off uh, the screen here so you can only have the front screen on if you want it minimal and then you can play with um, stuff like this let me can change the 3d cockpit i really like it it's pretty cool especially uh the navigation is my favorite uh, probably okay so um speed uh, cruise control is that easy to use although it's located on behind the steering wheel so you really can't see it um but you know it's fairly easy to use you also have the speed limiter um, and you just hold the button you can increase by one if I come closer or you can hold it and then increases by 5 10 uh, to a higher level and it speeds up very gradually you can tap the screen and it turns on if we hold this go to navigation Okay, so depending on the driving mode, uh, your range uh, will be different by a few kilometers. Uh, now to disengage the uh, cruise control, you can either use the little lever on the bottom or just press the brake, of course. So as mentioned, when you go a little bit faster in these corners, the car is very stable. If I do this, 
there is a little bit of leaning uh, but uh, the car is very comfortable on the road and again it's very fast and responsive it's like a little rocket with this um, power output and I really enjoy driving it I honestly do because it's just uh, it feels like a small sports car uh, sometimes see the camera picked up 40 limit but I know it's 80 here so uh, that's for the most cars have these problems but you can switch down and then you have the speed limiter so I've set the uh, 88 so if you can see it's orange and then if you accelerate um, it comes to that speed and it doesn't go above so 80 is the speed limit in Croatia we have a 10% tolerance so you can drive 88% uh, I mean 88 uh, in 80 uh, on highway we have an extra 10% to the speed limit so you can drive um, 156 or something like that but you know I keep it to 150 tops I usually drive personally maybe 140 130 depending on the traffic but uh, that's actually stated in the law uh, but in uh, other countries besides Croatia you don't have those tolerances uh, the only country that does have um, kind of freedom is Germany and Autobahn but that's just specific routes uh, this is what I'm mentioning um, it applies to all the highway in Croatia so uh, I think we're one of the rare countries from my knowledge that have this luxury of freedom on the road and you really don't need to speed faster than 150 uh, because it's just using more power in an electric car or more fuel in a uh, classical uh, car so it really makes no sense to drive faster and you know the risk is also higher so you know it's there's no need to go faster than that uh, for the most part if you always want to go faster you can go to Germany visit the Autobahn so the one thing uh, also I wish this car had is the auto hold if you let go the car creeps forward so it doesn't have the auto hold uh, but uh, what is also good is you are now in a drive mode if you see here D if I pull the lever towards myself it's a B so uh, in drive it the car coasts when you let go of the accelerator paddle and it slowly brakes with the electric motor in the B it brakes more with the electric motor it's more uh, like braking but there's a con uh, all electric cars should have a stoplight. Uh, I mean, excuse me, brake light should be on when you're recuperating, uh, when you're slowing down with the electric motor. A Peugeot, for some reason, doesn't have have that. But um, I'm sure they're gonna fix that once they realize that. But it's cool when you go through B. You can drive with one pedal. You can basically, you know, accelerate, and let go, and then the car slows down, and you just keep driving. I mean, keep accelerating, or let go, and you don't have to use as much of the uh, uh, actual brake and that's this means that um, you are not using as much as your brakes and most stuff that you're gonna service on this car are wiper blades um, brake fluid and uh, the brakes but the brakes are gonna last longer if you brake more with the electric motor so in the future um, you save more money driving electric not only by uh, using the electricity which is way cheaper especially in the night tariff you are also uh, spending less money on service which is um, also great um, in the long run and the um, investment is a little bit higher but hopefully with new uh, regulations in Europe if they exclude the uh, uh, value added tax electric cars will be more affordable and you'll be uh, able to afford one so uh, and in the future technology price will uh, decrease so they will be also more affordable so I definitely personally would buy electric car uh, if that happens it's also a measure to after the pandemic crisis to uh, you know boost the economy uh, here where no lights this is a long beam we're gonna come to a 
a part of the road where there is no lights where I can stop and we're gonna do a 0 to 100 test there's no one behind us uh, no one in front of us so I'm gonna put it to sport so sport and we're just gonna punch it since it's safe there's no one in front or behind us brakes are good so they're just on the sweet spot they're not too aggressive from the start but once you press them in they work hard uh, I mean they do their job um, the road is a bit wet so there was a, a lot of power it's kind of slips as you've seen so I'm just gonna turn here where there's no street light and So, let me see here. Okay, we're going to stop. There's occasional, there's like a never finished hospital and there's a storage area behind it. So we're gonna stop. Now I'm gonna show you the camera. This is the backing camera. Uh, the problem is when it gets wet, it's kind of blurry, you don't really see or the, when it condensates. So that's a little bit con, although the graphic resolution is good and when you back up, it's memorizing uh, behind you. But, um, so in park, you can see the base lights. This is the long beam. Now I'm gonna to switch to my iPhone. So this is the iPhone camera. This is the iPhone 12 Pro, the GoPro is nine. And this is the long beam. So you can see on the iPhone a lot better. This is how it looks in person for the most part. Okay, so I've set uh, the navigation just to show you how it After looks. 400 meters, cross the roundabout, second exit. And apparently uh, this map isn't updated with the new tunnel beneath the roundabout. Um, but you can see the blue line and you can see on the cross navigation. The roundabout, second exit. Now, I dislike you have to type in exact address or find it on the map. It doesn't show you like where is like you cannot type like uh the the name of the destination you need a, a specific address so uh, you know that's why i would use Waze or google maps pref preferably google maps but just wanted to show you how the navigation looks and especially this to begin say a command after the tone cancel route guidance navigation stopped there we go okay to sum up the review when I buy this car um, I would consider it it's not a bad electric car um, it has a decent range if you're driving around the city for the most part um, and it's very fun to drive because it's fast easy to park um, in the future, you know, maybe Peugeot will uh, hopefully um, add some stuff to this because I think this has a lot of potential, but maybe uh, it lacks some things. Uh, maybe this is just an electric car. I like it to be a smart car, but uh, I would consider it definitely uh, if you're looking for a small electric car. Now, I know there's music, but you can probably hear the buzzing sound when I leave the window down. That sound is warning the pedestrians. So we're just gonna find a parking space and uh, say that I've uh, left to a shopping mall, but it's more of a like a sort of driving from point A to point B. Um, backing up now, I like the backing camera isn't bad that much besides it gets a little bit wet, but personally I, I like to use the 
side mirrors. Um, in some tricky situations, I think uh, they're safer than the camera uh, in some tight spots uh, because the camera always has this a little bit distortion because of the fisheye lens. Uh, so it's safer not to hit someone's car uh, and save your own car as well. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you liked this. If you did, smash the like button. Leave your comments below what you think. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Don't forget your key. Don't forget your phone inside the car. Happens a lot. And as always, stay safe on the road and at home uh, in this pandemic situation. Uh, the car just looks gorgeous in this blue color. And you know, the LED lights on and off. And when you lock, you can see the turn signals flash. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.